Imagine a wall of water churning, building, scaling sea walls, and then slamming into beachgoers. That just happened. This is the terrifying moment a rogue wave slammed into the California coastline. You heard it there. Many are calling this a rogue wave. A rogue wave. For that rogue wave, this rogue wave in Ventura. Rogue wave is actually a scientific term, believe it or not, with a distinct definition. And despite the many, many claims that this was one, the experts we spoke to said it was likely something entirely different. Rogue waves, also known as freak or killer waves, have been part of marine folklore for centuries, often described as walls of water that seem to come out of nowhere. You probably recognize this print. It's from 1830, and it's one of the most reproduced images of all time. And it was thought to show a tsunami off the coast of Japan. But researchers recently discovered that it's probably actually a depiction of a rogue wave. For a long time, randomly occurring waves of this magnitude were thought to be scientifically impossible. But in 1995, a wave almost the size of a 10-story building was recorded near Norway, something scientists said at the time should not have existed. When suddenly, out of the blue, came a wave that was so high and so steep, scientists had thought it was impossible. Nobody had made those measurements at the exact time and place of a rogue wave until that point in 1995. Since then, others have been measured and they've even been shown to be more common than we had thought. Rogue waves aren't just big waves. There are differences. So rogue wave is sort of statistically defined as a wave that's two times the significant wave height. Meaning a wave that's at least twice the size of all the other waves around it. They're also incredibly hard to predict. They seem to come out of nowhere and from all directions, breaking the normal pattern of the surrounding waves. An individual wave which sticks out compared to the background. So you can have a rogue wave in low sea states. Most people don't care about it. But then uh, you can have a rogue wave in high sea states uh, and then you get a high wave height. But even though they seem like they're spontaneously appearing, we do know, like most waves, they're created by a transfer of energy. Usually it's the wind brushing the surface of the water that causes a wave to crest. And the water then typically moves in what's called a wave train, essentially a series of crests and troughs. In the ocean you, you get wave trains from different storms. Yeah? They are all a mixture of, of waves of slightly different lengths. And if they have different lengths, they have different speeds. One theory of how a rogue wave works is that when several of those wave trains are moving in different directions or at different speeds, they collide. And all that energy and water combines, and if they hit in the exact right way, crest to crest, it can create a sudden massive transfer of energy, resulting in a huge wave. We just got some terrifying video in of a storm battering a Norwegian cruise ship. A rogue wave temporarily took out that ship's power and its navigation systems. Rough seas out there. Generally, regions with strong ocean currents are the most susceptible, like the Gulf Stream that brings warm water from the Gulf of Mexico into the Atlantic Ocean, or the ultra-fast Agullis Current off the coast of South Africa. In storm events, in very, in what's known as confused seas, where you're seeing a lot of waves from a lot of different directions in very stormy weather, that's when it's more likely to have rogue waves. Rogue waves are still considered a relatively rare phenomenon, but new research suggests that could be changing. This 2019 study found that their size increased over 1% per year over a 23-year period. And part of the reason could be the rising temperature of our oceans. As the ocean is warming, storms are getting more intense, which means winds are more intense, and winds are what create waves, and so that means waves are getting more intense. But the main reason we're likely seeing more rogue waves is just that we're better at measuring and labeling them. Just a few years ago, scientists in BC recorded one of the most extreme rogue waves on record compared to all the waves surrounding it. If you look at the way the buoy moves, it's you know basically riding this sort of looking like normal motions, and then all of a sudden it just kind of goes into a huge trough and then onto a peak and then down into an even bigger trough. It was an 18 meter wave in the six meter wave, uh, background wave height, so it was three times larger than uh, the background waves there. We were lucky that we had an instrument at that location that recorded it. Because of
of their unpredictability, rogue waves can be extremely dangerous, even deadly. 30 feet high crashed through the windows and swept shin deep across the deck. Two people were killed. Often, these waves form far out to sea, damaging boats or pummeling passengers on deck. Most of the time, those are massive cargo ships weighing tens of thousands of metric tons. But no matter how big the boat, the power of a rogue wave can be intense. This video posted online in 2015 apparently shows a rogue wave rocking a massive cargo ship from side to side. And this video by a German group called Facts in Motion shows what experts say could happen if one of those ships hit a rogue wave dead on. This much weight unsupported by water can easily cause the ship to break apart. Some researchers even believe rogue waves could be the reason about two dozen ships go missing every year. They are reports of ships that survived uh, rogue waves, yeah. but there are also um, many suspicious sinking. It is suspected that uh, several ships yearly um, get severely damaged by rogue waves. And here's the thing. Rarely do these kinds of waves make it to shore. So while many are calling what just happened in California a rogue wave, and it did appear to surprise a lot of people, can see several onlookers swept off their feet, carried away by the rushing water. Some people pushed 50 yards down the street. It's somewhat unlikely that this was actually the case. When people talk about rogue waves, they're usually or almost always talking about waves out in the ocean. That's an important point. Waves in the deep water and without warning. In California, there were, in fact, warnings that this could happen. Lifeguards and the National Weather Service are warning people to stay out of the water for the next few days. They say that the surf is dangerous and the rip currents life-threatening. If there is a warning, then don't go to the beach and watch, yeah, stay back, yeah. According to experts, the most likely cause of this incident is a combination of waves from a powerful storm in the Pacific and a really high tide. In uh, shallow water, first waves, they steepen, they become higher, and then uh, when they are steep enough, they break. And so what happened there, it's really hard to determine whether that was actually a rogue wave that could have been a uh, simply a very large wave or a set of waves that came in, it coincided with a high tide, with a very high tide. So when you have those two things together, sometimes you have what looks like a rogue wave, but it is just indeed very large waves that end up running up along the beach and up and over barriers to roads and to houses and that. Now, whatever you want to call it, this wave did cause a significant amount of damage and at least eight people were sent to hospital. Oh. Oh no! Luckily, no one was killed.